So, NGW Shockwave, or NGW Shockwave, it starts off with highlights from the Battle Without Honor and Humanity pay-per-view that happened, what, last Thursday? Uh, we This ends up leading to a video package of The Shield where Moxley, Rollins, and Reigns indicate that the triple threat got in that cage and stood toe-to-toe with them. Uh, the Shield actually give the triple threat some big ups in this promo. Um, they state that no one has ever gone punch for punch with them like the triple threat have. But then they focus on the now. The Shield, and, and basically they, they, they continue speaking, and The Shield says that they came together to take out a common threat, being the triple threat. With that threat removed, they now look on to their next focus, and that's winning the NGW World Championship. All three talk about being in the battlefield at Battlefield Japan, and with all three having their sights set on the NGW World Championship, there is no longer a need for the shield. They indicate that they will always be a family, but may the best man win at Battlefield Japan. So after that promo, you have my ass on stage. And hold on, let me get my voice, because you know I'm about to pull a Tony Schiavone. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome out on the stage to discuss their upcoming NGW World Championship match, the NGW World Champion, Kenny Omega. (laughs) And Kenny Omega and Ted DiBiase, they strut out on on the stage. You know, they kind of mess around with me. And uh, Omega takes the microphone. And this is what Omega has to say, because I wrote another really long promo. The Great Muda. (laughs) You know something, Maddox? NGW has been advertising him as a Japanese legend and an icon, and I just don't know if that's true. He's good. I won't deny that. A legend? An icon? There's only one man in the pro wrestling industry who's both of those things, and you're looking at him. Muda, you think that just because we're in your backyard that you can skip the line and face me? (laughs) That's cute. A legend, Maddox? Really? Ted, are you hearing this? The great Muda, a legend? An icon? Well, Muda, I'm the best damn athlete on the whole planet. I'm the god of professional wrestling. At Battlefield Japan, I'm going to make short work of you just like I've done with every single person who stepped in that ring with me. And then I start speaking again, and I say, excuse me, champ. Yes, while it's true that you will be facing the Great Muda, or while it's true that the Great Muda will be challenging for the NGW World Championship at Battlefield Japan, I actually wanted your comments on your next opponent, Jungle Boy. And Omega has like a stunned look on his face. And he says, wait, that wasn't a typo? You're telling me that I'm actually stepping in the ring with (laughs) Jungle Boy? It's in the name, Maddox. He's a boy. I'm a god. How did he even earn this title match anyway? Did the rest of the locker room call in sick? I wasn't even going to waste my breath on him, but since you've wasted my time to bring me out to talk about him, here's a headline for the NGW Newswire. Jungle Boy is one of those garbage play wrestlers you hear about on wrestling podcasts. He competes in that indie garbage zero gravity crap where they jump off tables and run up walls doing corkscrew moonsaults on concrete for no damn reason. Let me tell you a story, Jungle Boy Jack. They used to call me a play. Re- they used to call me a play wrestler. They used to call me out for doing all those garbage things that you currently do night in and night out. Ted DiBiase helped smart me up. I grew up. I matured. I ascended to godhood. So, Jungle Boy, when you're in that ring with me, we're not doing backflips off the apron and finding objects to climb up just so we can do somersaults. No. You're going to be in a wrestling match with the god of professional wrestling. And we play the rest of that theme song. And Kenny Omega and Ted DiBiase, they leave the stage and we go to commercial break. When we come back from commercial break, we start off with a tag team match. And I'm not editing any more matches. Let me make sure all my matches are set. Uh, Yeah, everything else is set. So we, after Omega leaves the stage with Ted DiBiase, we get to our first match, which is the debut of our new tag team, the Bro Truth, our Truth and Matt Riddle, and they will be facing Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you heard, yeah, I just saw you join the Discord. You heard what Kenny Omega had to say about Jungle Boy. (laughs) Kenny Omega, I'm telling you, since aligning with Ted DiBiase 
his personality, his behavior, his actions, they're deplorable. There's just no other way to put it. And I apologize to Jungle Boy. If I had any idea that Kenny Omega was going to come out here and say those things about Jungle Boy, I wouldn't have done the interview. The TV champ is here before he has to go to a baseball game. Oh, man, you're going to miss some good stuff, Cedric. I'm sorry. And we are just 24 hours removed from the Without Honor pay-per-view. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, if you did not catch it, you have to go back and watch the video on demand, only on pay-per-view. The greatest TV champion in history. And here we go, though. But tonight we have a stacked show for you. Io Shirai and Britt Baker go one-on-one -on -one in our main event. It is a title eliminator. The winner of that match will go on to face the unified women's world champion sometime after Battlefield Japan. Big match tonight. But first, we have a, a tag team encounter. Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole, they just formed about a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago. Adam Cole turning his back on his former tag team partner, Jeff Hardy, part of that tag team, Charismatic Bay Bay, and forging an alliance with Kyle O'Reilly. And while these two are very tough, very game competitors, it, they've yet to find a win. They're 0-2 in tag team action. Tonight, they're looking to rebound with a big win but their opponents, like I said, a new tag team of Matt Riddle and R-Truth, and there's already a lot of synergy with these two. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fantastic contest. Biggest match in their career, some would say. Where is Annika, man? I want someone to commentary with me. I don't feel like running solo tonight. And Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, This again, if they pick up a win tonight... This could be a big statement to that tag team division. Oh, Ruben, one, two, two, three. You can be Batista all you want, man. Let me get you in the system here, buddy. How are you doing? I, I saw that. I saw where uh, you started following over the weekend. If you don't mind me asking, how did you come across our stream? I want to collect some data, if that's okay with you. Batista's a great pick, by the way. I'm a big fan of Batista. So we have the animal. The animal has joined NGW. We're going to. Uh, so here's what's going to happen with Batista. Batista's going to debut at Battlefield Japan. Batista will be in the Battlefield Japan match. We're going to talk. We're not. I'm not going to reveal that yet. That's not like something I say on the show. I'm just talking out of character right here. And Adam Cole and R-Truth starting things off. We got a lock up in the center of the ring. R-Truth with a headlock. Adam Cole there, planet in the center, feet firmly planted. Our truth still in control, tripping Adam Cole up. They're blowing the canvas here. Cole slow to get on that uptake. A kick to the midsection from our truth, and it looks like he's setting up a suplex. No, and face first suplex. What's going on, Key? How are you doing, man? Hey, um, you said you didn't have Discord, right? I believe it was you that said you didn't have Discord. So never mind. I was gonna say I thought there was someone else who messaged me about wanting a link to the Discord. I didn't get a chance to message him. There's a a, 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 a stiff kick from Adam Cole, and O'Reilly and Cole back in control of this match now. Cole taking our truth to the ropes. Oh, Walkman showed you, and Truth on that apron, and Cole, beautiful. That might take our truth completely out of it, folks. That just was a big game-changing move, but no, our truth with the right hand there. And a drop kick, but Adam Cole's able to sidestep it. And they're locking up horns. And there's a clothesline from our truth. Adam Cole flat. And now our truth going for a pinfall here. Kyle O'Reilly not getting in that ring. He must be confident Cole's gonna kick out, which of course Cole does. Kick out before the one. Cole sent to that corner. And truth. Uh, has has Adam Cole on that tree of woe position here. What's up, Brock? And there's a stomp from our truth to Adam Cole's midsection. What's the word on Barrett and Sheeta? Crow, do you not know? Have you not? Oh, you're not in Discord. Holy shit. Barrett debuted. He took a quarter of a million dollars from Ted DiBiase to take out Karrion Cross, and he lost to Karrion Cross. Do you not know what's going on with Hikaru Shida, though? You're going to like this. Our next pay-per-view was Thursday, Battlefield Japan. Hikaru Shida will be facing the NGW Women's Champion, Liv, Mor uh, 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 yeah, Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan and Hikaru Shida will be fighting uh, to unify the AEW Women's title and the NGW Women's Championship. The winner of that match will hold a new title called the uh, basically the NGW Unified Women's World Championship. 
So, and that is the main event of Battlefield Japan, by the way, guys. Hikaru Shida versus Liv Morgan is going to be the main event of Battlefield Japan, and it is a two out of three falls match. It's Brock on tonight. In practical, you're going to have to hit me up with some ideas on where you would like to see Brock Lesnar to go. Because you've lost to Razor Ramon, you got dominated, and then you lost to uh, The Miz, and you kind of got dominated in that match, too. So we got, we got to figure out some new plans for you. Because you're not going to be that same monster now. And O'Reilly and Adam Cole with cutting his throat. And there's a kick from Cole to the back of the head of Riddle. And a brain buster from O'Reilly. That might be it. It's Mark Henry on tonight. Mark Henry's going to debut at Battlefield Japan, my friend. He's going he's gonna to debut at Battlefield Japan as well. So you're going to be in the, uh, the big Royal Rumble uh, Thursday. And a two count for Matt Riddle. Cole can't believe it. Cole needs to get back on there. Cole needs to get back on Riddle. And he does so. Beautiful. Beautiful brain buster from Adam Cole. And I still can't believe those words that Kenny Omega had for Jungle Boy at the top of the show here. That match is going to be in 14, we are 14 days. Kenny Omega defending the NGW World Championship against the number one ranked Jungle Boy. And that you got to think, Omega has two, really, he has two focuses here. He's got to focus on Jungle Boy in two weeks. And then after Jungle Boy, he has the great Muda waiting for him in Battlefield Japan. And there's an elbow for Matt Riddle. And there's a strike from Riddle. Cole has Riddle on his shoulders, though. Oh, it just drops Riddle on his knee. And there's a forearm from Adam Cole. Riddle, though, not letting that strike affect him. He fires back with a go-to-sleep and a suplex from Riddle. And there's R-Truth. R-Truth getting in the ring. Kyle O'Reilly breaks up the pin. R-Truth just not able to stop O'Reilly before he broke the pin up. That could have ended the match, ladies and gentlemen. Belly to belly overhead suplex from Matt Riddle. Adam Cole in a lot of trouble here. He might want to bring in Kyle O'Reilly, the fresher man. And Cole just getting lifted up. A takedown from Matt Riddle. And Riddle, a suplex. Beautiful suplex from Riddle. And I'm really liking this team of R-Truth and Riddle. They're looking great here, but I spoke too soon. A kick from Adam Cole, and he breaks in Kyle O'Reilly. And that's a good decision from Adam Cole. Beautiful decision there. And look at O'Reilly, double leg takedown, and he starts firing off strikes on Matt Riddle. But I don't know if this is the man you want to exchange strikes with. O'Reilly with an arm bar, though. Riddle able to counter out of it. Riddle more than familiar with his fair share of mixed martial arts fights. He's, he is more than familiar with cage combat. And there's some striking from, from Kyle O'Reilly to Matt Riddle. We're calling them the bro truth as a play on the whole truth. Is that true? And there's a, an arm drag from Matt Riddle followed by a series of combat. Look at that combination on Kyle O'Reilly from Matt Riddle. And R-Truth getting tagged in. This is not looking good for Cole and O'Reilly. If they lose this match, you got to think there's 0-3 in tag team action. But a fireman's carry from Kyle O'Reilly and a clubbing blow. R-Truth back on top, though. R-Truth firing back, taking control of the match for his team. And Truth. What's Truth got set up here? No, O'Reilly slipping out of a suplex. But Truth able to get another one. No, O'Reilly with another reversal and a neck breaker from O'Reilly. And O'Reilly's going for a pin here. No, nope, he's going for an arm bar. My mistake. No, he's got the leg and the arm. In the center of that ring, Riddle able to break it up. This has been an excellent tag team match, ladies and gentlemen. Who is climbing up the rankings in NGW? Look at those elbows from Kyle O'Reilly. O'Reilly topping off Matt or R Truth with those elbows. O'Reilly is very aggressive in this match. He, again, one of my favorite expressions. He's like a pit bull. I use that a lot. And that's how that's how O'Reilly's been in this match. He's just not letting up on our truth right here. Just staying on top of him. Look, another submission attempt from O'Reilly. A guillotine choke. And our truth still not uh, nowhere near the ropes, having to rely on Matt Riddle to break it up. And that's a lot of oxygen out of his tank there. 
It's a lot. That's going to that's gonna cut into his stamina. It's going to determine what he can do in that ring. If I'm our truth and he just drops Kyle O'Reilly with a face buster, and that's what I was about to say. If I'm our truth, I'm looking to bring in Matt Riddle. But no, my mistake. Our truth going for the top rope. And an elbow drop right on the shoulder blade of Kyle O'Reilly. And there's a knee to the back. That knee really targeting that rib cage of O'Reilly's. And our truth up with a suplex and a cutter. Beautiful move from our truth. And we have a pin and a kick out from Adam Cole. Truth needs to get back on him. He needs to get back on him because O'Reilly's back up. And like I said, there's that pit bull mentality from Kyle O'Reilly dropping our truth with a back suplex. And a kick that's blocked by our truth. And a clothesline that O'Reilly ducks and our truth falls. That's, there, there's that stem I talked about. And they just dropped our truth back of the neck right on that knee. And look at and look at O'Reilly. O'Reilly working the knees to our truth spine there. Truth. What is O'Reilly doing? O'Reilly taking him to the corner. Adam Cole bringing Cole back into the match. And what's Cole working on? Oh, look at this combination attack. DDT and a wheelbarrow suplex from Cole and O'Reilly. And our truth trying to get to his feet. Cole just waiting. Cole lays in waiting. A kick to the knee. And he breaks the knee pad down. And there's a knee to the back of the head of our truth. That might finish it, folks. And our, that riddle able to break the pin up. Beautiful breakup from Riddle, saving his tag team partner. And Cole doesn't care. Cole's on the top rope now. Cole on the top rope with a splash. He gets all of it. And look at Adam Cole taunting Matt Riddle in the corner there. He needs to stop taunting and he needs to go on the attack. It's not the now's not the time to be cocky. Back suplex from Adam Cole. And he's still taunting. To who is he taunting to? These fans don't want to see it. I definitely, and a super kick though. And what is this? Oh, a straight jacket suplex. And we have the cover. Cole with the legs hook. And Cole and O'Reilly with a big victory tonight. And that's another loss for our friend Matt Riddle. Colin O'Reilly. You know what I didn't realize about this game? You have to change their victory poses as well. And they're just going on the attack. Vicious attack on our truth and riddle. And look at them just focusing their attack on our truth now. My, like a pack of rabbit dogs. Like a pack of rabbit. Did they toss our truth from the ring? How disgusting are these two? It wasn't enough to pick up a win tonight. It wasn't enough to pick up a win. They had to do that. They had to do that on top of it. So Kyle O'Reilly is one and two in tag action. Adam Cole is one and two in tag action. Matt Riddle, man, I think you've only won one match, and that was the match with Kevin Owens. Let me change that. Matt Riddle is one and two in tag yeah, and singles action, you're zero and three, and tag action, you're one and two. And our truth is now zero and zero and one in tag, but zero zero in singles. So that's our first match of tonight. Let's see where we're at with our show content now. It's our first match of the night. We get we now after the match. We get highlights of Liv Morgan versus Alexa Bliss uh, from Without Honor, which, by the way, those highlights are available on TikTok and Instagram if you did not see them. Uh, I will link you guys to both of those right now. I have to pull. I, I have to get my phone because I'm old as hell, and I do not remember um, the account names. Uh, so if you're on TikTok, I believe the TikTok is this. This is the TikTok and the Instagram. And I, I'm going to change these in my uh, commands as well. The Instagram account is going to be 
this. And I'm not a fan of the Instagram name, but yeah, that name was already taken. Okay, so that's your TikTok. That's the Instagram. If you guys aren't following, go ahead and follow. Check out the content that's on there. Pretty good stuff. So, and then we cut to an Alexa Bliss video package. And you guys, of course, she lost to Liv Morgan at Without Honor. Uh, what's going on, Ruman? She's she lost to uh, Alexa Bliss at or Alexa Bliss lost to Liv Morgan at Without Honor. So she's certainly not happy about losing the NGW Women's Championship. Uh, she says she wasn't able to sleep at all last night, knowing someone else had her title. And Alexa Bliss then vows that she will win it back and announces herself as a participant in the women's battlefield at Battlefield Japan. That takes us to another video package of the conquest. Io Shirai declares that while they came up short against Lita Candice LeRae and Bailey, their work is never done. Shayna Baszler congratulates Bailey on being announced for the battlefield, but she has doubts on if Bailey will even is even going to make it there. Io Shirai, meanwhile, calls Britt Baker a dangerous opponent who will do anything to win. Io respects that because that's the creed of the conquest. However, Shirai wonders what Britt Baker will do if the conquest decides to use their superior numbers. And then we go to a commercial break. When we come back from commercial break, that takes us to our next match of the night. Bailey versus Shayna Baszler. And Tony Storm of the Conquest is out here in Shayna Baszler's corner tonight. So Bailey is kind of outnumbered, more or less. And so we know right now that Alexa Bliss has joined the Battlefield Battle Royal. 30 women over the top rope. The last two women in the Battle Royal compete in a singles match for that briefcase. Bliss knows that that is her best way to get a rematch as soon as possible. And you, you can't take it away from Bliss. Bliss was a great champion. Her record, impressive 6-1. and one. All right, Walkman, take care, man. Her record, 6-1 and one in NGW. And uh, is she 6-1? Her record, 6-1 in NGW. She had three title defenses over Asuka, over Lita, over Ronda Rousey. Those are three, and those are, that's a who's who. Asuka, Lita, and Ronda Rousey, big major wins over all three. Alexa Bliss does not want to, be, did not want to scoff that. And to be honest, if you want my personal opinion, that is my pick for the winner of the women's battlefield at Battlefield Japan. But here is a, another strong contender for sure. Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler kind of the muscle of the conquest. She was the, she basically eliminated herself in order to eliminate Bailey from that elimination six woman tag at Without Honor. And that's what leads us to this match tonight. 24 hours later, Bailey versus Shayna Baszler. Keep in mind, Shayna Baszler probably the toughest woman in NGW for my money. She went, uh, her and Ruby Wright went 30 minutes. They have one of the, probably what many consider the best match in NGW history. Why does Dimes look so small, Wamba? What did you do to my Dimes? Why, why my Dimes so small, man? Damn, we got four small and two big dimes. This boy dropping the dimes. Bailey staying optimistic, though. Her team did win that six women elimination match. Candice LeRae picking up the last pin over Io Shirai, which the Conquest neglected to mention in their promo. Bailey is looking. Again, Bailey was knocked out of the top five. She was knocked out of the power rankings by Io Shirai. And you know she's looking to recover from that. Man, what? wait, is my dimes black and white now? That's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. Man, I miss you guys over the weekend. No cap. No cap. No cap. I've been your, 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 your guy. I, I'm probably going to stream this coming Sunday. And Bailey starts with a Hurricane Rana immediately taking Shayna Baszler out. And there's a kick from Bailey, followed by a stomp. Bailey really aggressive. Bailey really aggressive in this match. You know what? Because right now, because you guys weren't really like a uh, super alliance, you guys just allied to take on that one common enemy. And there's Shayna working on that arm. Because Shirai is now Shirai has moved on to fight Britt Baker. 
So as far as Shirai's con- as far like for Shirai, the leader of the conquest, she no longer considers Bailey, Lita, or Candice LeRae to be threats. So Bailey is unfortunately out here by herself. We could just as easily say that Lita and Candice LeRae not here tonight. Snap suplex from Bailey. Baszler just slammed on that canvas by Bailey with that snap suplex. And what is Bailey working on here? She's got Shayna. Places Shayna on the ropes. And all, did a beautiful stop, man, right on the chest. Oh, don't worry, Lita. We got stuff planned. I got, I got, I've been, I've been working on something. I got a team for you. I shouldn't spoil too much. I, I like to like let stuff happen and see how you guys react to it. And there's Bailey working on that arm, but Shayna able to throw some strikes to the midsection to get out of it. And a winding forearm from Shayna Baszler. And an uppercut from Bailey. Bailey firing back. Bailey not afraid of getting Baszler's face, but Baszler with the right arm. And she's got that arm behind her shoulder and a slam. That is not good on that shoulder. What's up, Super Mario? How you living, man? Shayna still working all over that shoulder. My goodness. Oh, that's not going to be good for Bailey. Like Shayna said, Shayna is going to do everything in her power to make sure Bailey does not make it to battlefield. Bailey with a quick pin. Shayna kicks out at one, though. She's still in this one. Bailey needs to be careful because Shayna is not. I don't necessarily know if Shayna's looking to win as much as she's looking to hurt Bailey. DDT from Bailey, though. And there's a stomp. Shayna rolls out of the way. Shayna with a jumping knee just knocks Bailey flat. Bailey hurts. Bailey hurting there. Shayna picks her back up. Bailey fights off. Bailey with the float over DDT. Planning Shayna Baszler. Baszler looking to look at crawling. Where is she crawling to? Crawling to the turnbuckle. Trying to get to the turnbuckle to get to her feet. Get some balance. And Bailey with a vicious chop across the chest. Placing Bailey on that top rope. Shannon with the knee to get off and a running knee. Dropping Bailey to the canvas. Bailey has to slide outside of the ring. And an arm drag from Shayna when Bailey gets back in. Shayna just really staying on top of Bailey here. Look at those series of knees from Shayna just tearing in to Bailey. Brooklyn has not competed. I have an idea for Brooklyn, but it's not. We're not gonna visit it for a while. And Baszler with another set of knees to Bailey. Man, she's really looking to hurt Bailey here. There's a gut wrench. Turns Bailey inside out and slams her. And look at that strength just rolls through and picks Bailey up. Bailey is being manhandled in this match right now. Baszler going for a pin. This might be it, folks. Bailey might have lost. No, two count. She doesn't look right Why are we not visiting it yet? Well, I told you to message me on Discord. And you didn't. I already told the other person what I had in mind for Brooklyn, for Brooklyn Von Braun, but Brooklyn probably won't be debuting until after Battlefield Japan. I have, I pretty much have all of my ducks in a row. And a Bailey to Bailey suplex for Bailey. That almost came out of nowhere. Storm's gonna have to get involved. No, I showed her up from Shayna. I showed her up from Shayna Baszler. Storm looked shocked. There's a sledgehammer blow from Bailey. And a big shoulder tackle in that corner. And there's Bailey showing that fun spirit she has. And an elbow. Shayna is dazed. Bailey with an Irish whip to the other corner. Shayna going face first. There's an elbow. Elbow from Shayna. Shayna able to get out of it. But Bailey back in control. No, Shayna takes the back. Sliding out of a scoop slam. Bailey with a counter. Fireman's carry. And Storm just staring up at Bailey from outside of that ring. Bailey not paying it no mind. There's a backbreaker. And another Bailey to belly suplex. And another kick out from Shayna. How tough is this woman? And Bailey just going right back on the attack. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do to Shayna Baszler. Baylor, Baszler, Irish whipping Bailey into the corner. 
This has been a match. This has been a classic. Look at that submission. You can't do anything with it because it's on the ropes, but it's just going to hurt Bailey even more. Bailey checking on that shoulder. Shayna going right back to attack, though. And there's that suplex. There's the rear naked choke. Bailey, no. Bailey gets out. It's Bailey's getting out of it. There's elbows to the rib cage and elbow to the face. Bailey has powered out of the rear naked choke. And a snap there from Bailey, followed by a kick to the spine. This has been back and forth only on NGW Shockwave, ladies and gentlemen. Live Tuesdays and Thursdays on Twitch TV. Bailey with a pin. That that I can't believe that won the match, but it did. Bailey coming away with the victory over Shayna Baszler. So good win for freaking Bailey there. Let's go ahead and get all of our stuff alphabetical. Bailey big win. Bailey is now three and one, guys. Bailey's three and one, and uh, I want to say Shayna Baszler. Even though Shayna Baszler's had some impressive matches, she's two and three with one no contest. Here is your winner, but that was a good match. Either way, it was a great match. Okay. After the match, we play highlights from the NGW Tag Team Championship match. Uh, between the bar and Edge and Orange Cassidy. So we see where uh, Sheamus takes out Orange Cassidy with that bro kick. Uh, once the highlights are over, we're ringside where the bar are in the ring, and they basically cut a promo about being the most dominant tag team in the company. Um, at that, Kofi Kingston and Ray Phoenix come out, and they step into the ring. Kofi indicate, yeah, I saw that. I will reply after the stream. Kofi indicates that while the bar may have gotten them, uh, may, while the bar may have beat them the first time at the Clash of the Champions, Phoenix and himself, uh, Phoenix and Kofi have been nothing but focused on taking those titles back, which is why they're out here. Kofi suggests a wager. If either he or Phoenix can beat Cesaro or Sheamus, they want a tag team championship match on a future shockwave. Cesaro and Sheamus smirk and they nod in agreement. Then Cesaro and Sheamus discuss who's taking the match, and Sheamus is the one who, who's going to step up for the bar. Kofi smiles and steps forward, but Phoenix holds him back. Referee comes ringside, and we have Phoenix versus Sheamus as our next match on Shockwave. But we go to a commercial break first. So we're on commercial break. How's everyone's day doing? I'm already sweaty. This light is beaming on my head tonight, man. It's not good. It's not good. It's really not. I got to probably turn it down. I'm going to melt tonight, guys. I'm going to melt in my chair. I'm going to blame all of you for it. Okay. So we come back from commercial break, and our next match is Sheamus with Cesaro in his corner versus Ray Phoenix with Kofi in his corner, and Sheamus starts off. Just throwing Phoenix. Look at that power from Sheamus. And you know, Sheamus and Cesaro, they call themselves the bar. They've also called themselves the most dominant tag team in NGW. And quite honestly, how can you disagree with them? The way they defeated Orange Cassidy and Edge, the way they took the titles from Kofi and Phoenix. And that was at, uh, what was the pay-per-view before Without Honor? Someone help me out here. Uh, Without Honor, the pay-per-view before that would have been Clash of the Champions. Uh, see, I don't, my memory sucks. They took the titles off of Kofi and Phoenix at the Clash of the Champions. And they won it back. Super kick from Phoenix. Dropped Sheamus. And you can hear it. You can just hear the echo of that kick. Sheamus might be knocked a little loopy there. And Phoenix follows up with the DDT. That's certainly not going to help Sheamus with his equilibrium problems right now. He's been not goofy. But Sheamus firing right back. Maybe I'm wrong. Sheamus taking Phoenix to the ropes. There's an elbow from Phoenix. Two elbows. Phoenix able to break that grapple by attacking the midsection. And a drop kick that Sheamus just blocks. Sheamus is a very powerful wrestler. Very strong. Very well composed, but he couldn't do anything about that Hurricane Rana from Phoenix. That's going to be the key for Phoenix to win this match. Use his speed and his footwork. 
And he throws Sheamus outside of the ring. Here we go. I don't like when Phoenix does this. This might not be necessary. Phoenix hits the rope. And he jumps over the top rope and lands on Sheamus. Beautiful. And Cesaro just watching. Phoenix has to be careful with Cesaro out there. And now look at Sheamus. He reminds me of the Red, of the red Rooster. <laughs> And wait a minute, Phoenix with a dragon screw taking Sheamus out. And there's Cesaro. What is Cesaro doing? Cesaro getting involved. Referee might want to step in here. Referee might want to step in. That allowed Sheamus to take control. But Phoenix throws Sheamus back in the match. And Cesaro grabbing Phoenix one more time. And Phoenix almost getting counted out. Why is it the ref And a jumping DDT from Phoenix. Why didn't the referee get involved? Why didn't the referee have anything to say? To, to Cesaro there. He almost got Phoenix counted out. And there's a kick that Sheamus blocks and a brutal clothesline nearly taking Phoenix's head off there. Dude, I am sweaty. I don't get it. There's a drop kick to the back. Phoenix dropping Sheamus. Sheamus using those ropes to get back to his feet, though. And there's a kick from Phoenix to Sheamus. Sheamus draped on that middle rope. Phoenix bounce it off. Oh, and a 619, a Tiger Fate kick. Irish whip from Phoenix to Sheamus. Phoenix has been in control since that dive to the outside, but I spoke too soon because Sheamus has Phoenix on his shoulders, and it just drops uh, Phoenix over the top rope. You do not want to get choked on that rope, ladies and gentlemen. There's a belly-to-belly -belly overhead suplex from Sheamus. And a knee, a brutal knee just dropped over the, the chest, almost aiming for that throw to Phoenix there with Sheamus. Phoenix finally able to get control, but Sheamus just shoving Phoenix down. Sheamus is the stronger wrestler between these two. There is no debating that. And there's an Irish curse. And I, Phoenix is back. If they do win this match, if Phoenix wins this match, he's going to go into the tag title match with a damaged back. I don't know if this was the smartest idea. Sheamus and Cesaro are not two guys that you really just want to get in that ring with without a plan. And we're out, bro kick. That's the kick that finished George Cassidy at Without Honor. And it's probably going to finish Phoenix here tonight. No, Phoenix gets his shoulder up, but barely. Barely with a shoulder up. Phoenix back to his feet. And a shoulder block from Sheamus. Sheamus staying on top of Phoenix here. Phoenix having a roll to the outside, but he gets back in. He's not afraid of Sheamus. And he's showing that way. He has Sheamus on his shoulder. What is he going to do? No, he plants Sheamus. Spikes Sheamus onto the ring, and he goes for a pin. And they pick up the victory. Phoenix and Kofi get tag team title shots. I didn't see that coming. Good win. Good win. That actually caught me by surprise. That caught me by surprise. So Kofi, Ray Phoenix is now, what's his record? What, what are we looking at for Phoenix's record? That match was awesome, was it not? I agree, man. Phoenix is now 3-3 three and three in singles action, and I believe that's Sheamus' first match in a singles match, and he lost. So, big win for Ray Phoenix and Kofi. We have tag team, uh, tag team title matches coming up down the road. Here we go, Womble. This is something you're probably going to want to pay attention to. This is something you're going to want to pay attention to, Womble. We cut to the backstage where Jeff Hardy is in his locker room. He's looking frustrated. He's looking upset because let's let's face let's face the facts. He's on a five match losing streak, having yet to win a match in NGW. Disrespect it no more walk up to Jeff and Jeff is on the defensive. He backs up. He's prepared to fight. And then Cedric speaks. Relax, Jeff. We're not here to fight. We have no reason to want to fight you. You're 0-5, man, and please don't take that as an insult. 
Tyler, Drew, myself, we understand what it's like to be overlooked, to be an afterthought. That's exactly how I've been treated since signing with this company. Throwing myself in any match they put me in. Getting lied to and placated by suits who haven't even once been in a wrestling ring. Cedric then shows off his newly won television championship. It's on his shoulder. He slaps it. He's looking at it, you know, kind of, you know, he's admiring it. Then I started making my own decisions. I started doing things that made sense to me, that made sense for my career. I went from being a guy flailing on the undercard to being the NGW television champion. Jeff, oh, hey, to being the NGW champion. To being the NGW champion, Jeff, and that's why we're here. You see, me, Bate, and McIntyre, we have this company figured out. They want us to be complacent, obedient dogs who sit in this locker room waiting and hoping for them to feed us whatever table scraps they have. We decided to be wolves instead, taking what we want. You've yet to win a match, Jeff, but if you shed from that good company soldier mentality and join our wolf pack, join Disrespected No More, you'd be surprised at what you could accomplish. Just some food for thought, man. And Disrespected No More, leave Jeff Hardy's locker room, and Jeff is left contemplating his thoughts. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Should Jeff join? Should Jeff join Disrespected No More? Should he join? Should he side with, uh, with, 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 this, with these thieves and connivers? What will Jeff Hardy do? Apollo Crews tweets, tonight I have an easy win against Jeff Hardy. He hasn't won since he was in TNA. Unless someone gets involved in this, this will be another win for Apollo. Also, if someone doesn't get involved, you will have a new enemy coming after you. Whoa. So, we go to a commercial break after that awesome interaction between disrespected no more and jeff hardy and when we come back from commercial break our next match is why is the i changed this match why is this match still happening? you guys saw me change this shit by the way right we all saw this shit get changed why is this happening let me just exit out jesus i literally changed that match to jeff hardy versus apollo cruz and it went back and changed it to that tag team match. Nonsense. All right. So that's... I fucking hate this game. I had to close the game because I have to change that match. That match was supposed to be Apollo Crews versus Jeff Hardy. And it keeps changing it back to a tag match between Carmella, Sasha, and Mandy Rose, and uh, Alexa Bliss. Which, don't get me wrong, that's a tag match I would love to see sometime down the road. We're not doing it now, and we're, we're certainly not doing Why can't I even? I can't even load my game. Why won't my game load? Why won't my game load? There it is. Come on. Yeah, uh, Impractical bought the game for $60, seeing all this stuff that's happening. I can't. That blows my mind that he bought it at full price. I told him multiple times not to do it, by the way. I was like, bro, you do not need that game this bad. And uh, no, I guess he disagreed. He wants to play it, man. Who am I to like? You know, who am I to like step in and tell him not to do it? You know, that's not my place. That's definitely not my place. Jeff Hardy with a huge decision to make indeed, but I have an even huger decision. Do I destroy this game and everything that it stands for? Jesus Christ, man. Oh, and now they change it to an entirely different match. Thanks. We've already seen this match, man. We've already seen this match. Well, that's why I told you to get 2K19. I told you not to buy this game. I only got it because I wanted an update. I wanted a close to updated roster. And I also, the game was also on sale. So that was like an easy decision for me. But if this game wasn't on sale, I wouldn't have gotten it. That's just, I mean, that's just the truth. That is just the ever-loving truth. Okay. This shit officially got changed this time. We all saw that I made this change, right? 
So let's start the show again. We're going to go ahead and simulate our first set of matches. Our true Matt Riddle still can't get a win. And we might be seeing the last days of Matt Riddle and NGW not messing around. This isn't UFC. You don't get cut for losing matches. Matt Riddle, because if, we, if that was the case, Jeff Hardy would have been gone a long time ago. So Kyle O'Reilly picked up that win for his team, I think. It doesn't matter, really. Uh... Who won this match? Shayna Baszler or Bailey? Bailey won this match. And then we just saw Phoenix beat Sheamus, which takes us to our next match. Apollo Crews versus Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy has a lot to think about. You saw Disrespect It No More approach Jeff Hardy in the locker room. Cedric Alexander, I guess, trying to present himself as the voice of reason, trying to give Jeff Hardy reasons to join Disrespect It No More, but that's not the Jeff Hardy I like. That's not the Jeff Hardy that I'm a fan of. That's not the Jeff Hardy that fans want to see. So, Jeff, I know you have a lot to think on. I know there's a lot weighing on you. You have, you have, you, you have yet to win a match in NGW. Um, just, I hope he makes the right decision. I know, I know I'm supposed to remain unbiased and impartial at the broadcast booth, but it's hard. It's very hard for me to do that. I'm not a fan of the things that Cedric Alexander has both done and said. I'm not a fan of his behavior, and I'm hoping that this is the wake-up call. I, I'm hoping that Jeff Hardy ignores what Jeff Hardy, what, what uh, Cedric Alexander said, and I... I, I'm also hoping that he bounces back from his 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 uh, loss streak, and Apollo Cruz actually had some things to tweet saying he doesn't care about what about who Jeff Hardy talked to. This was before uh, Apollo Cruz got out here. I guess he saw that interaction too. Said he doesn't care if someone gets who, he doesn't care who gets involved. He's gonna take them out too. So Apollo Cruz putting a warning to disre to disrespect it no more. I'm not sure if that's a smart decision for Apollo. And there's Jeff Hardy. And there's Jeff Hardy. He looks to be in positive spirits out here in this ring, though. It looks like all that worry that we saw in his face in the locker room has dissipated because it's bell time. It's put up or shut up, and Jeff Hardy brings the fire every time he's out here. Hardy very focused on this match. This is a zero-gravity rules match. Jeff Hardy has entered the zero gravity division, and this might be the this this is a match that I don't think you want to wrestle Jeff Hardy in. Falls count anywhere. There's Oblivion. Um, you haven't missed anything major yet, my man. How are you doing, by the way? You haven't missed well. You missed a pretty good. Was the Kenny Omega promo good? Did you guys like the Kenny Omega promo from the beginning? Uh, we did have an upset. Ty oh, WWE Universe, don't you dare be sour. Clap for your longest reigning tactic. That's the power. It's a new day. Yes, it is. What's going on, Titan? How are you doing? Oh, man, we're hanging in there. Having a good time, Oblivion. It's always a pleasure to see you. Welcome in. Women's champion, Oblivion, in the stream. And here we go. Bailey and Shayna Baszler had a great match. Hey, we got to follow Titan Has Join the Bad Guy Club. As you member of the club, you receive a pair of sunglasses, a switchblade, and a leather jacket. Thank you for joining the Baddest Club on Twitch TV. And remember to stay bad because being bad is fun. Everybody in the Bad Guy Club, let's welcome our newest bad guy, Tatten. Tatten, how you doing? And there's a Russian leg sweep from Jeff Hardy. Apollo Crews rolling to the apron. Uh, no, I am too dumb for you is the one who took your title. Zero gravity rules here. Kenny Omega had very disparaging things to say about the zero gravity division. But, you know, Johnny Gargano, we've seen that man time and time again have some fantastic matches at NGW. He will be defending the championship next week. Next week against Callisto. Oh, my God. Cash Nine has joined the Bad Guy Club. As the newest member of the club, you receive a pair of sunglasses, a switchblade, and a leather jacket. So thank you for joining the Baddest Club on Twitch TV. And remember to stay bad because being bad is fun. Craig, I wrote a fire promo for Kenny Omega. For those of you who were in the stream when I did the Kenny Omega promo, was it good? Tell Craig about that promo. 
And they're outside. Like I said, no count outs in zero gravity. False count anywhere. And Johnny Gargano, the zero gravity champion, you know he's watching this. Womble says 10-10 uh, promo. Tie-dye, you guys have tag team title matches on Thursday. Uh, Phoenix was able to beat Sheamus, and now you guys are challenging for the tag titles. Jeff Hardy going for a pin. What's going on, Cash? How you living? There's a one count. Everybody welcome Cash and I to the Bad Guy Club, our newest bad guy. We got Tat. What's Battle Sting? What about Battle Sting? Britt is in the main event tonight, Craig. She's the main event of this shockwave. This is only the first shockwave of the night. And she's in the main event. There's a kick from Cruz to Hardy's back. Hardy getting back to his feet. A face buster from Hardy. Hardy needs this win bad. You heard what Cedric Alexander said in the locker room. Cedric, though, or Apollo lifting Jeff Hardy in the air. Look at that stalling suplex. The blood rushing to Jeff Hardy's head. This cannot feel good for Hardy. And now he's one already drops. He drops Jeff Hardy. Dude, I'm a big 90s WWF fan, too. That's when I grew up, you know? I grew up. I started watching wrestling in 96. WrestleMania 12 was the first pay-per-view I saw. And I've been watching ever since. I'm more of a I'm a I'm a I'm a bigger fan of older wrestling than modern wrestling. And by older wrestling, I like the stuff that was before even my time. I like Mid South. I'm starting, I'm trying to find Mid Atlantic stuff to watch. And then I found a YouTube channel that has a lot of the USWA matches and shows. So I try to watch them now too. USWA is not bad. Pretty good stuff. Memphis. And I drop kid. Oh, it is a Gary from Cedric. Hardy is looking hurt here. Hardy's looking hurt. And Cedric going for a pin in the ring. The Macho Man at a WrestleMania. And Cruz. Cruz stalking Jeff Hardy. I'm not a fan of that WrestleMania. I did not like the tournament format. And there really was there wasn't a match. There wasn't really a match that like defined that pay-per-view. It was great that Macho Man won the title. But they didn't do anything. Jawbreaker from Jeff Hardy. Check out Jeff Hardy. And a DDT planning Apollo Crews. Crews on that middle rope. I am skeptical about 2K22 cash. I got to be honest, man. And what has he got? We got a catapult from Jeff Hardy. Crews getting launched into the middle rope. Catching his throw, and Jeff Hardy sees that as an opportunity for a pin. Smart move from Hardy, one count. Smart move from Hardy, but he only got a one count. Macho Man versus Steamboat was my favorite. Dude, that's a great match, man. If you like Macho Man versus Steamboat, you got to watch the Steamboat versus Flair matches from WCW. That was actually a really good point in time because at the time that Macho Man was the WWF champion, Steamboat was the NWA champion. So it's, like, really cool. And Steamboat had a series of matches with Ric Flair uh, over that title, and they were they're fantastic. And a Swanton bomb off the top rope. This might be Jeff Hardy's moment. Two, three, no, two count. Apollo Crews powers out. Look at the strength of Crews. Able to just power out of that. And Jeff... Not done with Cruz. An atomic drop. And a leg drop between the legs. And a missile drop kick. Dropping Cruz to the canvas. And Tony off the rope. And a splash. Cruz getting lifted to his feet. Cruz catches the boot. Cruz picking Jeff Hardy up in a powerbomb. A very big powerbomb that he's taunting here. This is not the time to taunt. Finish the match. I'm not liking this attitude from Apollo Cruz. Cruz just getting cockier every week. He a flex a cross body from Jeff Hardy. And another into Gurry just dropping Hardy to the canvas. Hardy looks out. Hardy looks out of it. Oh, and a Samoa drop. That might be it for Jeff Hardy. That might be it. But Jeff gets back to his feet. Irish whips Apollo Crews outside of the ring. What does Jeff have planned out here? No, he just goes for a pin. 
but only gets a one count. So I changed some sliders in this game, and the AI seems to be having some pretty freaking good matches now. Cruz throwing Jeff Hardy back into the ring. And Jeff reverses an Irish whip. But I need from Cruz. Cruz picks Jeff Hardy up. And he drops Jeff over the top rope. Cruz is just staying on top of Jeff Hardy. Another Enziguri. You can't take too many unprotected shots to the head. You just can't. It doesn't work that way. And that might be it. Cruz with the pin. No, Hardy's still fighting out. What's up, Fireboy King? Like the username. How you doing, my man? Hardy tossing Cruz back to the outside. And he goes for another pin. And a two count for Cruz. Cruz kicks out at two. Callisto and Gargano have a zero gravity match next week. But you know they're both watching this. This is a big match. And Cruz just launches Jeff Hardy across ringside. Top five, Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, Bre uh, Shawn Michaels, Open War, Undertaker, Bret Hart. Oh, God, my top five is Terry Funk, CM Punk, Toshiaki Kawada, uh, Bret Hart probably at number four, and number five, Manami Toyota. Oh, I'm hanging in there, Fireboy. How you living, my man? You doing good? Everyone good? I got you, is that Drew? I see your message. And a face buster from Hardy. Cruz has to roll outside of the ring. Yeah, Terry Funk is like, mm, he's probably my pro wrestling god, man. Damn, Craig bringing the beer out already. What is it IPA? Bruh, I bought a six-pack of Heineken. Heineken used to be my favorite drink uh, when I was in my 20s. And I finally decided to buy another six-pack just to relive my... I, don't, I, I miss Heineken. Heineken tastes fire. I'm probably going to buy a six. Ah, face buster from Hardy. Cruz having to roll outside the ring. Dude, I feel you, fire boy. I basically got an hour workout in this afternoon, and I'm not doing anything else. And then I got a workout ahead of me tomorrow, too. Uh-oh, tie I get a, get a Heineken. There's an elbow from Hardy. Chainsaw Charlie, that's right, man. He actually got that gimmick from another guy in FMW. I don't know if you remember, the, there used to be a wrestler in WCW named Corporal Kirshner. He went over to Japan as Leatherface. And he basically had the Texas Chainsaw Ma the Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And that was his gimmick in FMW. When Terry Funk came over to WWF uh, in 97, he basically wanted to pay homage to Cor uh, Corporal Kirshner. And he wanted to do that Leatherface gimmick. Uh, and that's how we got Chainsaw Charlie. What's going on, King of Pro? I've not seen you for a while. How you living, buddy? Jeff Hardy. Just dropping Cruz on the ramp. Hey, tie-dye, I started this show on Netflix called The Circle. What do you know about it? Nacho Mac convinced me to watch it. And I watched it with her, kind of skeptical. And, uh, dude, I got home uh, yesterday, and I've been watching. I've been watching ever since. I'm hooked to that show. Busy, I feel that, King. It's all good. Great history. I'm a I'm a I'm a pro I'm kind of a pro wrestling, not necessarily a historian, but I, I mean I follow, I listen to all the podcasts. I have a million pro books on pro wrestling. I have record books on different companies like Ticketgate, Attendance. I love to study that shit, man. I love to study that shit. Fireboy, can we play? I have it for PC first off, Fireboy. Second off, I don't really play this game. I just I just do sim matches. We do what we do in the stream is an interactive universe where you basically play the wrestlers, and we have our we have a Twitch promotion. Uh, so you're watching uh, an episode of Shockwave tonight. Hardy and Cruz fighting all up this ramp. This has been a brawl, a flat out war, a war between both of these men and the zero gravity division. Hardy really needs this win. 
and Hardy just firing forearm after forearm. Yes, I didn't think the ice cream tasted good. I only, I only ever had it once or twice as a kid. But I personally didn't think it. I don't remember it tasting good. Otherwise, I would have better memories of it. And Cruz dropped flat on the ramp. But he gets back to his feet. And a Russian leg sweep from Jeff Hardy. And an elbow drop. And a stop. Jeff Hardy wrestling this match like his life depends on it. We've never quite seen Jeff Hardy take it to this limit. And now Cruz firing back. If Jeff wins, you have to chug your whole beer. And Jeff with a pin on the ramp. And Cruz kicks out at two. My God, what is it going to take? Hardy cannot believe it. And Hardy, he's signaling it's time to delete. And a knee. Dropping it in. Cruz powers right back up, though. And a bicycle kick from Cruz. My God. Did you see Jeff Hardy's head? Bounce off that ramp and Jeff kicks out. Jeff kicks out. This has been one heck of a matchup, folks. Super kick to the midsection from Hardy. And Hardy just cranking that orb, but Cruz with the right hand able to power out of it. Another right hand from Cruz. Hardy on a knee. And Cruz, he's picking up Hardy. He has Hardy by the way. A suplex on the ramp. That's got to be it. That has to be it, folks. No, Hardy's still going. Hardy has Cruz. Atomic drop. And a strike to the back. Cruz blocks the second strike. And now they're just going face to face here. Cruz, though, Cruz not caring. On the ramp, Jesus. The impact on that ramp, you can hear it from my broadcast table. Cruz just picks. Oh, my God. That's got to be it. That inverted suplex on the ramp. No, Hardy still kicks out. There, this is nuts. This match is nuts. How the hell is Hardy? Hardy was getting just straight mobbed in his past matches, and now zero gravity. And Cruz now just going after Jeff Hardy's arm. Cruz is just focusing on a body part now. He has to. He has to do whatever he can to win this. And he picks Hardy up and another inverted suplex. Oh, and look at that jumping elbow. And Crow's going straight back to work on that arm. Jeff Hardy blocks. Forearm from Jeff. Face buster on the ramp. Jesus. That was unnecessary. What's up, Mississippi? I'm neither one. I'm Bad Guy Maddox, the commentator of NGW. And the unofficial owner, but you guys don't know that. Unlike Vince McMahon in the 90s. And a face crusher. They should not be on this stage. They should not be on this stage. Something dangerous is going to happen up here. DDT. DDT on the ramp. I know this is zero gravity. I know this is false count anywhere. But something's got to give, folks. Hardy trying to catch his breath. Hardy trying to catch his breath. Neck breaker. And now Hardy with another pin. And Cruz still kicks out. I can't believe Cruz and Hardy still kicking out of everything. And they're just trading strikes on the, on the rampway. A uh, crucifix bomb, my God. Cruz neck on that ramp. And Cruz still kicking out. Folks, this isn't even the main event of Shockwave. Of 
belly to belly overhead suplex, my lord. I don't know. If it, I wouldn't be surprised. That'd be weird, but it also wouldn't be uncommon for this game to have some kind of bug of, well, they're outside of the ring, so they're stronger now. Wait a minute, Jeff with a kick to the midsection. Cruz is looking to maim Jeff Hardy. And another cover from Cruz. My God, how is Jeff? How are, how are they? They're still kicking out. I literally just watched Bailey win a pin with a snapmare and a kick to the back. And you're telling me that these two are suplexing each other on the ramp multiple times, mind you. Russian leg sweep. Jesus, was that elbow drop necessary from Cruz? This is what it means for Jeff Hardy to win. This, well, really, this is what it means for both of these men to win. But Jeff Hardy's 0-5. He's never tasted victory in NGW. Apollo Crews has. So Jeff has nothing to lose in this match. But he might not have a career. He might not have a career if this keeps going. And they're still kicking out on this rampway. Look at how the shadows work. That's not how shadows work in real life, by the way, 2K. Oh, they're still going further up. Oh, my. Power bubble the ramp. My God. Jeff Hardy is not going to have anything left in him. Cruz is just beating. The hell out of Jeff Hardy. Wow, Jeff Hardy gets the reversal. And another bicycle kick from Cruz. And there's a knee. Well, hopefully, if it, we're going to, I'm going to have to start putting time limits on matches. Because this game is very random about, like, some matches go, like, five minutes. And then some matches literally go half an hour. Remember that if you guys weren't in the stream when Shayna Baszler and Ry Ruby Riot had that match where they literally went, they went 26 real life minutes. It was nuts. Jeff just missing that flying forearm. I've yet to see anyone hit their finisher out here, though. Where suddenly Jeff Hardy doesn't know how to do a twist of fate. Real life minutes, because you know sometimes this game be on that BS where the time in this game moves faster than what it really is. Like they tell you that the Royal Rumble in this game has two minute intervals between participants, but then you play the game and they come out like every five seconds. A hot bowl of ramen. Okay, Tida, I see you. They are there. These two are just beating the hell, hell out of each other on this stage. I think I'm going to do basically the New Japan format. We're going to go hour time limit for title matches, and we'll say 25 minutes for non title. Yeah, Mississippi. I don't like, seriously, man, I don't like that. Uh, if you tell me in the settings that it's 120 seconds. In between Royal Rumble entrance, I'm expecting it to be two minutes in between every Royal Rumble entrance. Not no bullshit, six and a half seconds. And then every and then the other thing that's messed up about the Rumble is that like sometimes your participants don't come out for a while. So like there will be point in times in the Rumble where guys are coming out like literally every six seconds, and then you'll have a low where like for a full minute no one comes out, even though the ring's not full. There'll be like five people in the ring, and the sixth person won't come out won't come out for like a minute and a half. It's really weird. Face Buster! Jesus Christ, what's going to end this match? Forgive my language, folks. Apollo Crews still kicks out. They got to get, I, I just don't know what to do here. I don't know what's going to happen here.
We have got to have a victor in this match. Jesus, what a close line on the ramp. And they, they're programmed to move their opponent for a pin. Hey, Matt, as we can do Oh, two, why 2K15? That game is probably my least favorite of the series. But interesting. It was the first next-gen game uh, for WWE for, what, Xbox? Xbox One and PS4? But it was not a very good game. Not as bad as 2K20. But not good either. Two K sixteen to me was like that one was really good. Two K sixteen was good, and in hindsight, I think I have a stronger appreciation for two K nineteen. We're probably going to reset this match if we cannot get some kind of victor determined. Are you kidding me? We're gonna. I'm gonna reset it, and we're just gonna say they got back in the ring because this is insane. There's something about 2K20 that when sometimes when they go outside of the ring, they just kind of go weird. The the AI goes brain dead, and this is one of those times. But wait a minute, they're going back to the ring now. It looks like neck breaker from Jeff Hardy. And a takedown from Cruz. This has been one of the most aggressive zero gravity matches. Hardy getting back in the ring. And Apollo Cruz get chasing behind him. We're back at rank, folks. Cruz back to his feet. Northern Light Suplex from Cruz. And a standing shooting star press. That might be enough for Cruz to get a victory. Referee, two, three. Apollo Cruz with a big victory in a zero gravity classic. Nothing but dimes, baby. Uh, I don't believe, uh, is he? Ah, uh, let me look. Yeah, I guess he is in that. That's right, because he was in that historical mode. I don't remember him being in that game. But I also don't remember playing that. I don't. I don't remember liking that game. So Apollo Cruz is now two and two in NGW, and uh, Jeff Hardy. What are you gonna do since you lost? You said you were gonna chug the beer if you won, but you never told us what you were gonna do if you lost. You or you are zero and six, Jeff. What in the hell are you gonna do? I'll tell you what's gonna happen on my end of the, on my end of things. Disrespect it no more. Come out to ringside, and they circle around Jeff Hardy, and it, and they're basically about to beat Jeff Hardy down. But instead, they help Jeff Hardy get to his feet. They dust off his shoulders. And they tell him that he looked good with Cedric finalizing. You'll get him next time. And then disrespected no more leave. And that takes us to our main event of the night, the title eliminator. The winner of this match challenges for the unified women's world championship. Yeah. <laughs> Wobble is zero and six, but my God, we still can't help but love him. Apollo Cruz tweets, hey, disrespect no more. You chose the wrong person to talk to before me and Jeff's match. Now you'll never have the future Prince of Wrestling, Apollo, in your corner. And there's Britt Baker. Let's see what you said. I have to scroll up. I'm getting 2K15 because of CM Punk, the storyline feature universe rivalry, and the career because I played 2K17 and Baron Blade was in it. So I'm bashing Baron again in the career. Yeah, I, I'm sure that, and that game's probably not super expensive. I was not a fan of that one i didn't play it very long that was a great match that's probably the a uh, fire match a fire match between jeff hardy and apollo cruz what a fantastic zero gravity match 
Oh my god, it, dude, that match with Thunder Rosa is probably like my favorite women's match in North America. That match was fantastic. They put it all on the line. I just didn't like how I didn't like that Thunder Rosa won the match and they presented her, they presented Britt Baker a lot more on TV than they did Thunder Rosa. Like I get it was a non-sanctioned match so it doesn't count toward their records in terms of their like, you know, their kayfabe record. But I'm just saying, like, why haven't we seen Thunder Rosa more on Dynamite despite beating Britt Baker? We saw Britt Baker immediately the next week after that match. I just, I don't, I, I didn't like some of the, the uh, post-match booking. And there's the leader of the conquest, Io Shirai with Tony Storm in her corner tonight. Britt Baker is by herself, and that's what Io Shirai said. Britt Baker might, <laughs> Britt Baker, uh, they, they, they might share a philosophy in doing everything it takes to win. At least that's what Io Shirai said, uh, that they, that, the, that Britt Baker shares a lot in common with the Conquest, that they do everything in their power to win. But Britt Baker doesn't have any friends, whereas Io Shirai, she has Tony Storm in her corner tonight. But as we saw earlier, having Tony Storm did not help Shayna Baszler beat Bailey. And we get a lockup here. Title eliminator, folks. Womble, we will get there. We will get there. I like to, I don't know, I like, I'm sure you've noticed that I like to draw my storylines out. Instead of going for immediate payoffs, I like to build up to them. So we're, we're going to get there. We don't know what's going to happen yet. And I don't know. I, I, have, I know what I want to happen. And I have some stuff written out, but we're not going to get there just yet. Matt, it's been a cop for Xbox One. That is the original case with the sticker, and the Sid paper stuff that is on the side will be in it. So I'm getting a complete case without getting without anything thrown away. That's pretty cool, man. That's hype. I have all of my. Uh, I don't trade games in anymore. I stopped doing that a long time ago. So I pretty every anything that I've bought from like I don't know 2012 on, I still have a copy of. Oh no, I lie. I did trade in Splatoon 2 because I thought that game was not very fun. That was the first game I got with my Switch. It was the first and only game I got with my Switch. And I got home and played that, turned that shit on. I was like, this is trash. <laughs> I did not like Splatoon. And a, oh, a fame ass is from Brit Breaker. And there's the El Shirai using those ropes to get to her feet. Baker still in control, though. Back suplex. And a kick to the midsection from Britt Baker. Another fan master. I have friends who play the hell out of Splatoon. And when I watch them play it, they make it look like that game's fun. But I didn't, I didn't like it. I was not a fan. Britt Baker really in control of this match. But Shirai attacking that leg now. And there's a dragon screw from Shirai. I still can't get over that match we just saw between Apollo Crews and Jeff Hardy. Zero gravity match. And when I say they fought all over the arena, I am not making that up, folks. They were on that stage. They were on that ramp. We saw all kinds of devastating maneuvers. And it finished in the ring with Apollo Crews winning with a standing shooting star press. You got to give it up for Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy, one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. And there's a choke for Mio Shirai. Let's go ahead and get rid of him. And Britt Baker knocked out on the canvas. And there's Shirai on the top rope. Frog splash. And a pin. But a one count from Britt Baker. You gotta, I can't believe Britt Baker able to kick out at one after that frog splash. Shirai got all of it. Jeff Punk and Styles in my top five. That's not a bad that's not bad company to have in your top five. There are so many, like, I think there's so many great wrestlers. It's really hard for me to narrow down a top five, but the top five that I listed earlier is about as close as I'm gonna get. Oh, and she just stopped on Britt Baker! A moonsault stop! And double underhooks from Shirai! And a backbreaker! Shirai looking aggressive has never looked better since since turning her back on the NGW universe since forming Conquest with Shayna Baszler and Tony Storm. She has a killer instinct that she didn't quite have before. 
And you can thank Kyrie Sane for bringing this out of Io Shirai. Oh, it's all good, Ty. I don't even sweat it. And there's Britt throwing Shirai into the corner, though. A chop from Britt, but Shirai fires back with a chop of her own. Irish whip from Shirai and a drop kick. Baker rolling to the outside. Baker also not one uh, to support the NGW universe. Uh, no, because 2 you got to think, 2K20 came out way before COVID was ever a thing. 2K20 was a failure because they half-assed the game like they always do. 2K has always historic not 2K, not just 2K. THQ and 2K has historically always shortchanged the WWE games because they know that there's only one wrestling game and that wrestling fans are going to buy it. And when I say only one wrestling game, yes, there's Fire Pro, but your average, your, your, your WWE fan has no fucking clue what Fire Pro is, right? And then a lot of them, like one of my buddies saw Fire Pro and hated it because it was 2D. It's like, that's crazy. It's a great game. He's all oh, that game belongs in the 90s. Okay. He's one of those cats that if a game doesn't have like AAA graphics, it's not good, which blows my mind. He will talk about how great Cyberpunk is because of how good it looks. And it's like, that's not, it's a good looking game, but that doesn't make it a great game. Yeah, it's, it's definitely with, with WWE 2K games, it's always like two steps forward, but five steps back. Not according to my friend King. My friend basically equates a game's quality. There are two things my friend looks for in a game. If a game doesn't have multiplayer, it's trash. If the game doesn't have good graphics, it's also trash. And I don't like talking video games with him because I'll be playing something like Celeste or Hollow Knight, and he'll see me playing Hollow Knight, and he'll be like, man, that game can't be fun. It looks like it came out in 1999. Like, what the hell? Because it's 2D, it's not good. Oh, 2K22 is definitely going to have community creations. And there's Shirai on the top rope. Shirai, moonsault. She got it. And the referee in possession. And no, oh, Britt Baker kicks out. Okay, so Super Mario Dinosaurs, top five, Styles, Rollins, Morrison, Bliss, Lana. It's not in order. That's pretty good top five, yeah. I have no issues. I don't have any issues with anyone's top fives. Pretty good list. Pretty good list. Wild Harpy with Hitman, Macho Man, Eddie Guerrero, and Rey Mysterio. And Stone Cold. Why didn't you pick Bret the Hitman Hart? Isn't he in this game? Or is he not in this game? Did I make that up? I thought Bret Hart was in this game. If Bret Hart's not in this game. Oh, wow. Bret Hart's in this game. Oh, hell yeah, King. Chrono Trigger? Chrono Trigger is still one of my favorite games to this day. I like Earthbound too. I I, uh, I actually bought the Super Nintendo uh, Classic specifically to play Earthbound. That game is fucking awesome. I also have that. There's a random Android tablet I have laying somewhere in one of my dresser drawers that has Earthbound, all the Earthbound games, on them. This could be big. And there's the underhooks for Yoshirai again, dropping Britt Baker on our back one more time. And Shirai. Hopping the top rope. Is Shirai going for a second moonsault? Yeah, no. Oh, I thought Britt Baker got her knees up. She didn't. Shirai got all of it. And Shirai will challenge the unified women's world champion sometime after Battlefield. Damn, that was these matches have been fired tonight. So that was our main event of the first episode of Shockwave tonight. And what a Shirai... Why is Tony Storm laying there? Okay, we are ignoring this because Tony Storm was on Shirai's team. That's weird. Okay, the game glitch. There's one of those famous $60 bugs in 2K20. And what an impressive win for Io Shirai. She's looking toward Battlefield Japan. She's looking at the Battlefield Japan between Liv Morgan and Hikaru Shida because she knows that she's next in line for a crack at their title. I'm Bad Guy Maddox. Thank you for watching NGW Shockwave. We will see you next week.